So with the clockwork, I expect the SF. Now Vici, they need a mid and a safe laner. I'm I'm still expecting expecting the mid Kunkka for Ori. And against the SF, if they are gonna go for the SF, that could be a problem for Ehom. And they've left this opportunity where it looks like they're gonna go SF. They don't necessarily have to. But I'm always impressed by Ori mid on the Kunkka, and he could go into the OD as well. Both are open, and if you don't pick the Kunkka here, you could get your choice because there's only one uh, ban left. And they go Weaver here for Paparazzi. So they leave the mid open. Got Disruptor, Tusk, Centaur. Used to be banned Bloodseeker if you were to pick up the, uh, the Weaver. And they ban Lena instead. So a lot of options here for Ori. Kunkka with the OD. If you want to go into the, the TA, although I'd like to see a little bit more lockdown, that's why I like the Kunkka or the OD. Could go DK if you'd like. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. So we'll see what the final ban is here from Vici. If they are, in fact, going to go to the Shadow Fiend over mid, if Vici really even care. They've got Glimpse with the Kinetic Field. I don't like a Shadow Fiend pick here from Ehome. They'll actually ban the OD themselves. So that does that become the Kunkka for Ori or the DK or maybe a Puck. There's a lot here for Vici, but I do like the Ori Kunkka. 10 seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Dire team pick. And there it is. Yeah, no surprise. Ori loves Kunkka. It's good control. The Torrent's great. With the team that he's got around him, it's nice as well. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. And there's the Bloodseeker. I'm I'm actually shocked with that Bloodseeker. You don't see Bloodseeker that often. Back in the previous patch, it used to be you pick a Weaver, you're banning the Bloodseeker. But now... Hmm... Now is they pick up the Bloodseeker for Ego. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. So Uri on the Kunkka Paparazzi with the Weaver DY with the Disruptor, Fade on the Tusk, Yang on the Centaur. Ego on the Bloodseeker, ASD on the Razor, Faith Beyond with the Tide, TMing with the Shadow, Shaman, and Innocence on the 5 position, Clockwork. And they, with this Bloodseeker, we'll see if they're able to pull it off or not. I'm not exactly liking the E-Home draft at the moment.
go into this game too and see what uh, Vici if they're able to pull off the 2-0 or if Ehom are going to get themselves to a game three year winner of this series goes to the finals Go. Ooh, too early on the transition. Prepare for battle. So here we go. Ego going right now into the off lane here with Tian Ming. They'll send the Razor into the mid lane. And Faithion going safe lane for the moment. That DY over towards bottom with Ori Fade and Paparazzi following. Yang over in the off lane by himself for the moment. So going Tidebringer level 1, it will be mid Ori. They're not going to move the positionings on these heroes for the early part of this game. And Bloodseeker down here. We'll see what he's able to do. I I'm still interested to see if this Bloodseeker is the pick. Again, you usually ban the Bloodseeker against a Weaver, but... Ooh, clockwork in a lot of trouble for heroes here. Now with the tag team, yeah, oh yeah, more than enough damage for Ori to get first blood. first blood. Four heroes come around, they'll get first blood on the Innocence. Fade giving the nice little tip, just the tip, to Ori. The battle begins. No. Get the bounty rune there for Eom with TM Ming. Yang actually grabbing both his bounty runes top. So three bounty runes to start this off for the side of Vici. So over mid will be ASD against Ori. They've got the Razor over mid with Tide over towards top for the moment. Ehome over bottom. We'll see what they're able to do here with the Bloodseeker as well as Tian Ming already TPing back. Take a look over towards top as Faith Beyond is here against Yang. So you've got your three positions up against each other. See if Faithion's able to find himself a good chunk of farm. Usually on this tide, he's relatively good. We see him at top of the net worth, especially when it's 1v1. He's so good at finding his farm with this tide. And recently he has performed very well. We've got TM Ming here with Ego, Fade sitting down here with uh well with paparazzi nearby. Got four tangos ready to heal up when need be. He's got Shikuchi level one as well as Geminate attack. And the tag team comes out. They'll look for the silence, but the Shikuchi's already there. Thunderstrike through from the Disruptor. It's an easy kill there for the side of Vici. Tag team just too good. And with Geminate attack coming in, with the tag team slowing up this, <laughs> this Shadow Shaman... It's already 2-0 here for Vici. Don't look over at bottom. Cogs come out from Y. Fade locked in for a moment. But they need to be careful as Sentry Ward is here for now. Looking for the silence. Paparazzi is silenced up. But they'll look for the kill again under the Shadow Shaman. Cogs are okay from Innocence. Actually push back Paparazzi. Fade and only level two, but he should have... He should have had shards to maybe throw. I don't know if it would have been enough damage at that moment, but 
it ends up that he's able to survive regardless and what's the matter region situation like actually it might not matter ego getting stopped by the sharks they've got the tag team on top of this again silence sooner the disruptor they'll look for the kill oh surviving with such little health innocent to a clean up dui this try be try at the moment a big bloodbath Two to one in favor of Vici for the moment. As again, Faith Beyond finding some farm over top, but as is Yang, it's a, yeah, really, I don't think either hero dies so long unless they rotate somebody over. As Yang going with the hook stomp, but again, it's just pressure on both these heroes just in case there is to be a rotation. They've got the glimpse that pulls Innocence back. But not enough damage to get the kill. Not as easily as they were once getting it here for the side of Vici. Farm is nice. The shards come out. Or actually, the cogs come out once again. Why with the thunder strike? They've got the silence on a paparazzi trying to run. Innocence moving forward. He won't be able to find paparazzi. Now the tag team's showing up Ego. They don't have shards to follow this up. Only one charge on that stick. So they won't be able to throw out shards to block Ego. And he's sitting level 3 with this blood right doing a lot of damage onto the paparazzi weaver every time it lands. So it's three kills here for Vici over in the bottom lane. The lane we haven't really spoken about is mid. And with Uri level 5, he's sitting a, a couple of last hits behind ASD. ASD actually has 14 denies. But static link coming through rotation. From the Tusk, we'll see if Fade's able to do anything. He doesn't have Snowball, he just has one of the shards. So they've got X. They'll be able to place the shards around ASD, especially with the Torrent hitting. Now they'll have Tag Team on top of all this. The damage is there for them under the tower, but it's not going to matter. Paparazzi gets the kill on ASD as he rotates over. That's going to bring level 3 here for Fade. Snowball. The Tidebringer, TM Ming, into the trees he'll go, but Uri able to get the kill. Two more here for Vici, 5-1. to one. DY with Paparazzi moving away. Ego takes advantage, he'll get a kill and a support. Uri though with that kill. About evens it up with ASD, he'll TP over to the Shrine. Shrine up, and back to lane OV. Full health, full mana. Double damage. Again, just as top lane. They're both level six. But it will it will be just be Kraken Shell and Anchor Smash right now for Faith Beyond. Not going in any into the gush, which is sometimes what you see at least a casual point, or if he's looking to be aggressive, but obviously with a 1v1, he's not. Shack goes over mid, fade. He doesn't have the snowball, but he does have shards. Shards come out. Lock in two, but the cogs are there. Paparazzi in a little bit of trouble as he's pushed away from the cogs. They've also got the blood right on him. So sitting really low. Get the kill here onto the tusk. Ego's been coming around and... Well, he gets the kill over bottom on DY. Makes a rotation. They kill off the tusk. So, eight kills in just seven minutes. It's been a bit of a bloodbath so far. As the try v try has been quite exciting, the top 1v1 has uh, been a little bit of a snoozer. But almost level 7 there, as Faith Beyond pushes away the Centaur. Goes into the Vlad's first item, and he's sitting level 7. We'll see if he goes into the Ravage. Might hold the point just in case he wants to get him involved with a TP over into a team fight. T 
Tian Ming just continuing to farm. I was looking for a second with the Ether Shock. Y comes in, spots DY. Meanwhile, over mid, Uri coming around with Yang. See if they want to go on ASD because Axe with the Torrent as well as the Hoof Stomp is a nice chunk of lockdown if they're able to make a move but the boy right comes out as well as the shackles that's gonna be under the tusky silence up getting low he's trying to get out of here but he's silent so he's not able to get himself into the boat or into the uh, snowball sorry the boat comes out ego tming both drop the glimpse is there and now innocence he's gonna fall as well and whoop all of all of vici so it looked like Ori had disconnected. Paparazzi, I guess, right-clicking, even though he might have disconnected as well. But all five disconnect, and they take the team fight 3-1. to one. So, Vici up to 8 to 4. As we'll see when they do reconnect. Faith Beyond, he's sitting level 8. He does actually take that 4th point into Anchor Smash. Again, holding this point just in case uh, he's needed in a lane to throw a Ravage, which might have been over bottom, but I believe there were TPs in already, where it might have been rough for him to get back in and uh, throw a Ravage, especially with where this is more towards... Uh, the tier 1 on the Radiant side, it's more in favor of Vici if a TP were to come in, where if you're TPing into the tier 1, he probably wouldn't have made it in time anyway, so he can't really rotate. to see them finally reconnect so we don't have to remake here although isn't the remake function non-existent anymore so heard you guys talking about or saw you guys talking about my chair in, in uh, chat this is what it sounds like Let me tell you, just a beautiful sound there. So, let's take a look at what the builds are going to be as the Bloodseeker. I mean has these boots le only level four at the moment in these rotations you've got ori level seven eh, about even with the razor paparazzi sitting at level five so he gets ahead with this team fight over bottom centaur meanwhile he's halfway through level seven with tied into level eight like i said holding that point for the ravage clockwork would love an early six so he could get a hook shot out i think a hook shot here for the side of eho might be nice Although it's almost counterintuitive, is that the right word? Where you're looking for a hook shot into the cogs. So you're keeping them stable, but you want the rupture and for them to run. I mean, I, at the same time, when you've got the rupture, you almost want them to stop so you can follow up with the rest of your team. But I'm going to start to reconnect here. So, I mean, late game, I'm trying to think what you've got here. I just don't know if it's going to be enough. Like, the team fight is there, of course, with the Ravage if you're able to land it, but it's on such a high cooldown where Vici could take advantage. Boat level 3 is 40 seconds. You've got Stampede to initiate. It's every 90, but you'll have a Blink Dagger eventually here on Yang. 
and then paparazzi depending on his build uh, with the lockdown and the chase that they have for vici i, I just don't I, I just don't think that vici's really in much of a problem unless they fall behind all of a sudden by five six thousand net worth and and it really snowballs that into ehome's favor we'll see what the tide build is going to be as well uh sometimes we see some tides get very aggressive with a blink dagger which is normal but i'm talking blink with other items that you're doing damage with like vlad's is a start here oh, that is going to be interesting for faith beyond i'm trying to remember what his builds were previously on this tide hunter i can't remember off the top of my head Let's take a look. Did he play Tide yesterday? I believe he did multiple times. Lost the first game as Tide, but won the third game as Tide. And he ended up going into the BKB 4 staff blink with Vlad's first item. So that's not a bad combination. That's not the carry Tide we've seen. And then game one, it ended up being Vlad's pipe, Shiva's boots of travel. So he was doing a lot of damage. But we're back into the game. Everybody back here for the side of VG as they all disconnected for a moment. top and they'll find yang ravage is blown here got the static link as well as the hex there's the shackle so this will get the kill faith beyond gets credit for that one holding on to that point finally throwing the ravage asd was able to take 152 damage from the centaur <clears throat> so they get an easy kill over top does require the ravage which in this game, with such a high cooldown and that being one of the only team fight skills on the side of Ehome, it's the omnipresence of the Ravage that it might be a little bit more important. Because this seemingly gives free reign to Vici to be aggressive, and now they've got the Flames as well as the Snowball coming out. The Blood Rite laid down, but they have the damage to clean up Innocence. It's Paparazzi's damage with the tag team there. Now Paparazzi dominating. Meanwhile, mid, both ASD and TM main go down to Yang, so he gets a little bit of revenge. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. So Yang, you may have died earlier over top and used Stampede, but this time around he helps to get the kill over mid onto the Razor. They also get the tower, and now they'll push in over bottom. This is what Vici needs. Again, as long as they have a lead, I don't think there's much for them to worry about. Hookshot will come in, but again... I just don't think it's that much. Radiance top tower is under attack. Got three wraith bands onto the weaver. They smoke up with sentries here, so they know they aren't under vision. It'll be the tusk as well as the disruptor to look over mid once again on the ASD. Or he will set it up with the X if he has to. But they've got Glimpse level 2. Stampede comes out. And ASD is actually onto the high ground. There it is into the Static Storm. They've also got the host stop as well as the Static Storm. Medic field locking him in. And Yang with yet another kill. Kunkka was over top, so they didn't have him rotate over. It was actually Yang who did all the work there with uh, the damage. But Static Storm, of course doing quite a bit as well and they did have the control with the glimpse into the kinetic field with Ori continuing to farm over top. Middle tower is under attack. You get nothing. So. Savage is up but just not enough mana for it at the moment. He's got the soul ring. Finally has enough for the ravage. But it's only the Kunkka here and three heroes nearby for the side of Vichy's. You want to be precise with this Ravage because now that it's up again, again, it's that omnipresence of a Ravage coming out. But where is your follow-up? Where does your follow-up come from? Is it, a ra is it a rupture into a Ravage with a hookshot from downtown? No, because Innocence is only level four. You've got Shackles. You've got Hex. You have the damage to follow this up. Maybe if you get a good enough static link after the Ravage and the Hex... 
you can have the Razor do quite a bit, but you got to remember that he's only got two Wraith bands. So Vici having the armlet on Uri, Yang here going into the Blink Dagger, having a Vlad's of his own. Uh, the farm is there right now for Vici to start being aggressive if they want to. So here comes Pi, but I mean, that's always fun. Static Link on uh, Fade, taking 115 damage. That's the one thing you gotta hate. TPing in and, uh, well, getting glimpsed back immediately following. That is not fun at all. So they're coming in. They've got the tag team as well as the Walrus Punch. Finally, the Hook Shot comes in as he used the Toma Knowledge at a couple minutes ago. They'll get the kill on a DY. They've got the Shackles. That'll follow up on a fade. Two kills here for e -Home. They don't even use Ravage. It's a good little counterplay, and it's the Hook Shot that does it to turn it around. Very clumped up were Vici. They were unable to make anything happen. Serpent Ward's laid in. They lose those two supports, but at the same time, it's just paparazzi continuing to farm looking for the dragon lands you've got the armor here under the kunkka a thousand gold saved up for him centaur going into the blink dagger taking the tier one tower over top would like to see faith beyond going to a blink dagger but he'll go to the bkb he's got phase boots so it's not awful he wants to get in with the bkb run in and ravage Radiant's bottom tower is under attack from the shade. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Still pressuring the top tier too. Nobody coming over. Pocket player comes out over bottom. They'll get the tier one. And now Faith Beyond nearby. Yang has to be a little bit careful with Ravage possibly to come out. It's all the two Ravage, so he doesn't have the mana at the moment. Faith Beyond, though. They've got the kinetic field that's going to land on the Ego. The Blood right laid down. Walrus Punch. The damage is out. They've got the Rupture onto Weaver. And he'll just continue to run away as it's non lethal. Shot coming out onto DY. The boat will follow this in. As they've got the X, it lands out of the Clockwork. Snowball follows it up. The kinetic field is there with the Static Storm laid down onto Y as well as Faith Beyond. He still has Ravage. Have to use the Soaring to get it off, and now the X coming in. Doesn't Ravage, is it even worth Ravaging? They've only got TM Ming to follow this up, so Faith Beyond has to just hold Ravage, see what he can do as they go after the Shadow Shaman. The Shards block him out for a moment, but they've got the Glimpse. Snowball coming back around. It won't end up landing. They'll get the kill here on a TM Ming. And the Walrus Punch comes out on a Faith Beyond. He stays as long as he can, survives as long as he can, but with five heroes still here for Vici, they'll get the kill. So 16 to 7, 7,000 net worth lead. Vici very much ahead. Like I said, as long as they had a lead, they should be okay in this game. going into a Morbid Mask, Bloodseeker, looking for a bit of a recovery Midas. And they smoke up. Uh, again, they've got the Ravage, so maybe they're able to make something happen with this smoke if they find a good enough fight. You'd like to make the Ravage worth at least two kills. Ori already TPing away. ASD shows himself over bottom. And that's it. Vici already out of here, and it's still pushing over top is Yang. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Coming in. 
We've got the Midas on of the Bloodseeker. Ori, he's into a Crystalis. He is so far in right now. 2,000 net worth ahead of the Tidehunter. So far ahead of the other two cores of both the Bloodseeker as well as the Razor. BKB will be first for the Razor. It'll be BKB coming in for the Bloodseeker with this Midas help. But Ori already so farmed here, and they'll find Innocence by himself without his team. And going into the Necro, one is Fate on this Tusk. So he's found a bit of farm. He'll be going into the Necro with Weaver, Paparazzi going Dragonlance after picking up this Maelstrom. And Blink Dagger out on the Centaur, so they have the Blink Initiation with the Blink Post. Tom Kush comes through on the Ori. Faithgon has to be careful. Meanwhile, over towards top, Paparazzi is here. Got the Invis rune. Faith beyond. Coming over, but again, he's just not able to find good positioning without a blink deck. Dato, his second item is the Kunkka. And 17 to 7, it's, to me, looking really bad for the side of Ehome. Like I said, they really wanted to have a lead early, but unfortunately, with the pressure that Vici put in, that just wasn't going to happen. So now you're dealing with a Vici side that's 7,000 net worth ahead. They've got so much control, so much chase. The damage will already be there, especially once they get this Dato. It's out of the Kunkka. It marks the spot. Up drawn to Ori. They've got the boat right on top of it. The Blood Rite comes in. That's going to silence up this Weaver. Coming around will be Faith Beyond. He'll look for a Ravage. But they split up, and they've also got Stampede, so he's, they're all gone. They're all gone. Faith Beyond never throws the Ravage. The team unable to follow up. DY, Blood Rite. But TPing out, that is not worth the Ravage. And be home again, finding no answers. that like home for a moment might be able to fight there with a rupture coming out onto the Kunkka and then possibly a Ravage follow-up, but they don't end up looking for a team fight as such as they drop the Serpent Wards as well. They committed a lot to that fight and don't even end up really skirmishing. Fade, now with the Necro Book, he's going into the Blink Dagger. With this Blink Dagger, he'll Blink Walrus Punch Snowball for the initiation. So you've got two initiators that'll be here for the side of Beachy once they do, in fact, get the Blink Dagger on the Tusk. It's x and Boat, and Ori kills off Innocence, but at the same time, Fade found out over bottom. ASD gets the kill that's going to push him closer to the BKB, actually push him into the BKB. We'll see if this is the item that they need on Ehome for Razor to start being effective inside this game. Ego still looking for the BKB as well. He's got 2,300 gold saved up. Dato is finished up for Ori, and they'll go in a Roche. There it is. They've already got the Aegis. They also have a ward up here to try and land that kinetic steel, but... <clears throat> He's almost got his BKB. There it is. And Bloodseeker, I think, opting out of the BKB. 
that he was saving up for going into an axe. As well as in Aether. So they've got the rupture. That'll come through on a Yang with the Stampede used. They've got the axe, but the BKB is going to be popped by ASD. They'll look for the kill on a Yang. Running away. Kinetic Field not stopping ASD. The shards come out. Now they are unable to catch Yang. They've also got the boat following it up. But the Roar is punching on ASD. That'll hit onto the Bloodseeker. Hookshot comes in. That'll keep ASD alive with the Ravage following it up. But Paparazzi gets the kill into Tian Ming. They've got the Snowball to keep this tie, uh, Tusk alive. is also popped by Faith Beyond. They'll kill off DY. That's going to be a two for two. But they've lost Ego. Buyback comes up from DY. ASD goes down to Ori. who has got so much damage at the moment. Innocent's trying to run away with Faith Beyond. Who no longer has the Ravage. They kill the Clockwork. They look for Faith Beyond. They look for the full team wipe. There's the Torrent landing. With the hoof stomp and the kill there for Yang. Full team wipe in the favor of Vici. And Ehom just eating the dust at the moment of Vici as they continue to just show their pressure, show their dominance in this game, despite losing two. Thousand net worth lead for v for Vici, Bloodseeker just not doing anything in this game. Razor showing with the BKB almost able to get a kill on a Yang, but unable to finish off this Centaur. They get the kill on the Tusk as well as this Disruptor, but on the high ground again. He does have that hook shot. They'll pressure the tier 2 over mid. Under Meanwhile, bottom Faith Beyond still here. Mask of Madness picked up for the Razor. And the pressure just coming out from Vici. They're unable to find anything for Ehome. It, it's so hard to make this fight work without the Ravage and they have to just let it go. Boy, Ori. Got the X. Won't be able to pull him back just yet. He'll eventually find his way back into the hands of Ori. The snowball. Serpent Ward's laid down, but it's not going to matter. TM Ming losing his life. Faith Beyond coming in. He's got Ravage in just a moment. The hookshot comes out on a DY. The static storm laid down on a two of these heroes. The BKB's going to be caught by ASD. The Ravage following it up, but it's not going to be enough. Paparazzi with the damage. Faith Beyond gets the kill on a DY by ASD, as well as Ego already gone with Ego buying back. They got the tag team pop. BKB is going to be popped by Faith Beyond. They look over at Ego once again to get him dead once more. It's a dieback on the Bloodseeker. There's the snowball coming in. They'll also take out Innocence. Three years are going to be dead here. Paparazzi chasing on the TM Ming as well as Faith Beyond. Link forward. Tag team shards coming out. They'll get the kill onto the Shadow Shaman. Looking over the tide for the full team wipe. And there it is once again for Vici. This really could just be the game. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. So just so much pressure coming out on the Eom. And again, even with the Ravage, they just don't have any follow-up. There's nothing that they can do. 30 to 11, 17,000 net worth lead. And I hate to reiterate myself too much, but it, it was Ehome that needed an early advantage. The, the Bloodseeker doesn't do anything. Razor, even with the BKB, can't find any kills. The, without that damage there from the Bloodseeker as well as the Razor, what does the Ravage really accomplish except for... Just locking down Vici for a split second. 
Shot comes down. The Tusk. Yang is here. The Cogs pushing away the Tusk because they've got the hook stomp. They'll get the kill on the TM. They will cover face beyond. The damage coming out from Yang as well as Paparazzi is quite a bit with the BKB being popped by the Weaver is now. The Razor pops his BKB. He'll get the kill on a face beyond. They look over at ASU, stealing a lot of damage. The Stampede's going to be used as the shards block him in. And a lot of damage to follow this up. They'll get the kill on ASU. They'll also take out Innocence. The Snowball over, looking for Ego. They get it to land. The Blink Hoof Stomp comes out. They'll get the kill. Another full team wipe here for Vici, losing one. And GG's called. Vici will take the series two to nothing. Two nothing victory here for Vici. Thirty five to twelve. Again, if there wasn't an early lead for E Home, it just wasn't going to go their way. There was just no chance for it to go their way. I really didn't even like the Bloodseeker pick. Just not having lethal damage on on Rupture is such a neutering to that hero. I mean, what's even the point? But. Uh, I mean, they, they picked it last, they tried, and VG 35-12, to 12, I mean, you take a look, Dota Plus had a, a stroke thinking that Ehome were going to win this game with this lineup, and VG, they end up just blowing past Ehome, and they get the win, so, VG move on to the finals, that'll be against the winner of IG and Ehome coming up next, that's the lower bracket final coming up in who knows how long, it says an hour and a half, but... Uh, from what I've been seeing with this competition, they've been rolling into it just consecutively. So, um, we'll see when that starts. It's going to be IG versus Ehome. That should be a much closer matchup than we just saw with, uh, Vici here. Again, a spotted MDL is on the line and, uh, we'll be back in a moment. Um, on top of that, I, I had asked a couple of co-casters to join me. I know a lot of people hate solo casting. I understand that. But it's either not a good time for them because it's 2 in the morning for me or they had something going on. It's not as easy to get a co-caster that you trust um, so easily. Uh, there are a lot of people I trust, but a lot of people who just can't work right now. A lot of things are happening. A lot of casters working for WePlay or traveling for Lupe or just the fact that Chinese Dota goes on till 9 in the morning Eastern time. Like, it's not that easy to have people commit to this. That's why I'm solo a lot on these games. So, I mean, as I, I can work with a co-caster. I know that. Um, so, I don't know. I, I, I'd love to have one, but it is very tough at times to get one for these times. Which sucks, because Chinese Dota deserves a little bit better. I know I'm not amazing. I know I'm getting there. But, uh, yeah, that's all I got. Love you guys. See you in a bit. IG vs. E home. And who knows? Hopefully not too long. Yeah. Let's get this IG logo ready to be spotted on this scene. And we'll be back in a moment. Love you guys. See you in a little bit. Stay right there. <laughs> 